Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for the um, conference, uh, to the conference organizers for putting this together. Um, I'm, I'm really honored to be here. This is my kind of first bona fide academic presentation. Uh, my name is Christopher Deridix, and in all truth, uh, Julie's name should probably be uh, there on the, the slide as well. And if, uh, if things go well, you can uh, let Julie know she did a great job with the presentation. If they don't go well, you can give me feedback afterwards. I'll appreciate that. Um, I'm a curriculum designer at the Center for Applied Second Language Studies. And our panel title is Harnessing Digital Technology to Unpack the Dynamism of Human Interaction. And we're going to focus um, in this next set section on the right side of that model, subjectivity and awareness, by looking really closely at metapragmatic development through explicit mindfulness training. Um, I say really closely, but we're actually going to zoom right through it, uh, right across the top of it, actually. We don't have a ton of time. So these are our six orienting questions. What is mindfulness? What is digital mindfulness? What is Analog U, which is the app that, um, that we're in the middle of developing? It's been about a year so far. Um, and next, uh, how do digital mindfulness and metapragmatics connect? Uh, followed by how does metapragmatics connect to Analog U and what are the next steps? But before we jump into that first question, what is mindfulness? We're going to look at two um, two kind of token examples of the pragmatics of digital life. And here's the first one. It's just a token scenario. It's a fictitious situation. It's a screenshot of a text message sent from a host sister to her study abroad um, uh, student that's living with her. Kim is uh, short for Kimiko, and this student is... Uh, informing uh, her study abroad student. Unfortunately, she's not going to be able to make it to her party. And the question that I'd kind of like to think about as we look at this is, what does this screenshot afford? How much information can we draw from this instance of the pragmatics of life in the 21st century? Um, I think we can make a lot of inferences about the nature of their relationship, about what's, uh, what's happening in this moment, and attempt maybe attempt for repair there at the end. Um, so ultimately, this is simply just here to frame a snapshot of uh, contemporary digitally mediated communication and experience. That's the first example that's our kind of preamble to how we're going to jump in. And the second one is kind of the analog U origin story. Um, in my mind, this is how we, we kind of how we roll at Castles. This is Julie's style. It's very exciting. The Vice Provost of International Affairs has this big ask, can you make me this program uh, to, to, to facilitate digital mindfulness? And Julie says, yes. And then, what is digital mindfulness? <laughs> um, so take a quick look at the at the timestamp. Again, this is fictitious. It's a kind of it's a tale that I'm going to tell about how how the the app came to life. But you know, as I was putting the the image together, thinking about you know this ask happens in the morning. Uh, what does it say that Julie waited till four? Probably not much. She's a busy person. Um, but it does say that maybe she's in a meeting or something. And to me, this the timestamps point to this migration in and out of the digital space. Right, and hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see the times there. And then the, the gap in between, what's transpiring in the, in the actual world uh, for Julie between 4 and 7.30 when she kind of has to check back in and reorient to, to what she's agreed to. Um, so those, those kind of frame the, the pragmatics of digital life. Um, and now we're going to dig in to the question at hand. What is, what is mindfulness? Question number one. Some classic definitions. It has to do with paying attention, uh, but not just generally. And it has to do with paying attention in a specific way, purposefully, oriented towards the present moment, without judgment. The second definition, um, same features, self-regulation of attention. Um, a, it's maintained on immediate experience. It has these kind of these characteristics, uh, dispositional characteristics of curiosity, openness, and acceptance. Um, next, what does the um, what is the empirical support for uh, mindfulness interventions um, in education, in particular? This information is synthesized one from a literature review, another from a uh, meta analysis. General findings report an overall positive impact. Specifically, I'd like to highlight behavior management as well as learning strategies. 
these both highlight the agentive behavior um, that mindfulness engenders, uh, and it points towards that subjectivity and awareness that was on the right side of the model. The central features um, identified in the literature of mindfulness have to do with intention, attention, and attitude. Again, this points to that uh, self-awareness and subjectivity, which, which really hinge around or, or again, engender um, learners' sense of personal formation, their development, their self-construction, and a posture towards so pro, <clears throat> excuse me, towards pro-social behavior. But this doesn't really answer the, the question that Julie posed there at the end of the text string. What is digital mindfulness? We're gonna begin by answering that question negatively with a drawing uh, that I think is, um, is, is borne out from the needs analysis that we, um, that we conducted, a review of this mindfulness app space, and we saw a tendency in two directions. One direction is to look down, which says, look down and put the phone to use, right? This is something that you can use to become more mindful. And essentially, this is just a very basic, this, this class of mindfulness apps is a very basic uh, instantiation of digitally mediated mindfulness instruction. It's just mindfulness instruction that happens on an app. That's the, the look down approach. Um, an example of this would be the app Headspace that's kind of popular right now. The other approach says look up, put the device away, look up towards the blue sky, unplug. Um, this would be characterized by tracking apps that say uh, how much you're using this program or that program, how often you're on the internet, what are you doing, um, and then potentially to say let's block these features, let's block this time. So these are the two, um, the two tendencies we saw that exist in this mindfulness, digital mindfulness space presently, or rather digitally mediated mindfulness interventions, because they're not digital mindfulness proper. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, the apps that exist are currently kind of fall into to one of these two categories, but we, we see something, uh, kind of a third way that, that is lacking and that needs um, some, some further attention. And it's really, it's really precipitated by this, the coming of age, the digital coming of age, both for individuals and for us kind of as a species. Um, Look at these, look, this is a sprint ad. Look at these significant milestones in human development. First steps, first haircut, first day of school. We want to say that digital mindfulness, as we understand it, as we've come to develop this concept, requires a third approach which recognizes devices as portals for experience. And that these devices are actually mediating socialization and acculturation, but not only that, also cognition itself. These devices are profoundly integrated into the fabric of our physical, psychological, and social lives. Technology co-regulates and co-articulates with human cognition. And for these reasons, digital mindfulness attempts uh, to engage the world of digital distraction as a performance space where targeted aspects of both digital and analog experience are drawn up into conscious awareness and directed towards more conscious and conscientious participation. I like to ask really big questions, and fortunately the, the kind of project um, initiator, the, the vice provost of um, undergraduate studies at the time, uh, it does as well, and, and one of the, some of the questions, and Julie does too, some of the questions that we're really kind of looking at, we're looking down, um, down upon are, or up at, I guess, uh, what is the trajectory of human consciousness? And how does digital technology mediate that trajectory? And, and what is our responsibility towards this moment in history when, um, when uh, in the press currently there's a lot of heat directed at at these folks who have developed many, app, many of these apps for, for kind of doing a disservice to humanity by dis explicitly designing these, um, these apps to, um, to be addictive, quite literally. And, and what, are our, uh, 
what are our responsibilities um, in this moment to that? So then finally, let's look at, it, at the, the full body definition that our team has come up with. Um, digital mindfulness then is mindfulness not only addressed toward, but occasioned by the habitual use of digital technology. It's technology that seeks to induct users into mindful awareness through simultaneously recruiting the most habitually deployed features of mobile digital, of our mobile and digital lives, while also promoting increased reflection and intentionality. That's the thrust of this concept that we're, we're working to develop through this app. So then the next question in our, in our series here is, what is Analog U? Um, quite, uh, now that we've gotten to this point in the conversation, I can say with, with kind of some coherence that Analog U is a digital mindfulness app. Um, it's, but more specifically, it's digital strategies instruction oriented around the affective side of experience that's um, designed to encourage self-regulated use of mobile technology. It's, it's not only affective, uh, strategies instruction though, because generally speaking, mindfulness instruction is affective strategies instruction, but this is um, affective strategies instruction within the digital domain, or, or kind of at that liminal border between the digital domain and the actual. Um, and when we think of that space, again, think of the, the, the text message between Julie and the Vice Provost, the way that this, this migration in and out of that digital space, so much, we, as we know, so much of this uh, digital technology is uh, social, texting, social media, web. So what we want to say is that much in the same way that the study of pragmatics and functional language use raises meta-awareness around uh, the dynamics of interpersonal and cross-cultural com uh, communication, we want to say that Analog U attempts to raise that same kind of awareness around the dynamics of digitally mediated experience. So why do we, why do we want to say that? Well, because we think that there's a connection between digital mindfulness and kind of meta-pragmatic awareness. Um, specifically, if we look at the work done by um, uh, Julie and uh, Steve Thorne, and, um, and others in this space of synthetic immersive environments, we can see that synthetic immersive environments have been shown effective for pragmatics instruction, for stra uh, strategies, in, huh, excuse me, strategies instruction, and that, and that in that, um, they've been shown effective for cross-cultural learning. So meta-pragmatics is gonna focus on awareness and the negotiation of social dynamics at the intersection of language and culture, and this digital mindfulness instruction is going to focus on awareness and negotiation of the emotional dynamics um, that are rooted, really rooted in the same or similar or somehow overlapping systems of um, society, cognition, uh, the material world, and the emotional, kind of the emotional systems that are at play when we're interacting socially um, and then having some just our own subjective experience. So what this does is this puts, what we're attempting to do is put um, meta-pragmatic awareness and, and digital mindfulness kind of on parallel tracks and say that through the research that's been done in synthetic uh, immersive environments for pragmatics and strategies instruction, which moves students away from a laundry list of strategies and rules about interpersonal communication and intercultural communication and towards this disposition of informed, intentional, authenticated practice, we want to say that that same, that same process is um, availed through digital mindfulness, mo again, moving away from a laundry list um, towards uh, a disposition. So how does metapragmatics connect to analog U? This is kind of already emerging from the talk by simply addressing the pragmatics of digitally mediated experience. But not so much focused on individual to individual interaction as pragmatics proper does, or group to group interaction, but rather by highlighting the dynamic between the user and their device. Right? That's the kind, of the kind of awareness that we're looking to raise. 
and the way that the device mediates their experience. So we worked to our strengths, essentially, in putting this digital mindfulness app together. And what we did is we pulled from the same uh, Ishikara and Hohen, uh, Cohen model that Stephanie cited earlier, um, observe, analyze, and extend. <clears throat> and we found that that model actually coordinates really well with the heart of mindfulness training that emerged from uh, John Kabat-Zinn's work at UMass Medical School that's oriented around these three parallel notions of uh, notice, reflect, and choose. So, and, and as we developed it, there's a really strong correlation between these kind of these subpoints. So, on the observe side, uh, oh, by the way, there, there's a little formatting issue. Meta, meta pragmatic should be on the left, and analog you should be on the on the far right. So, um, on the left, observe. This is from meta pragmatic awareness, uh, attention without interpretation. Um, on the right side, we're seeing the the kind of um, subtopics under noticing that are actually key topics addressed within the app, and there are lessons um, entailed on, behind each of those topics. Um, okay, so here are some screenshots from the app regarding the, the notice section. Um, so like I said, Analog U is a sort of um, uh, pragmatics intervention in the guise of mindfulness intervention. Uh, it's because it's it's kind of coordinating across these three these three parallel domains, and that's the the kind of the first reason that it's a sort of pragmatics intervention. The second is that um, the avatar that we that we are um, cultivating in the app is here in the middle and on the right side. The avatar's name is Robox, and over the course of uh, a user's engagement with the app. The, um, the avatar becomes more embellished, it becomes more developed, it becomes more kind of more sentient. Um, and so the avatar is actually a sort of cultural informant from the other side, from the digital domain. And the avatar says things like, your phone is my body. Sorry, I'm having a hard time reading it. Your phone is my body, uh, but I can't, uh, I can't sense it on my own. Can you tell me what my body is like? Um, and this culture informant helps mediate the experience. Okay. Next. Uh, again, coordinating between the meta pragmatics on the left and, and analog you, mindfulness on the right. The first item across the top, each of those deals with awareness. The second, construal of the illocutionary force of an utterance and pleasant and unpleasant experiences. They might seem like they're kind of um, not really coordinated, but from my perspective, both of these kind of answer the question, what is happening? What is happening around me? On the left, from a pragmatic standpoint, what, what's, what, is the, what are the dynamics at play in this interaction? And on the right, what are the di dynamics at play within my, kind of with, within my own experience? So here are more screenshots uh, from the, the reflect section. The avatar as interlocutor helps to um, externalize and helps the user vocalize their subjective experience. So the middle one there, uh, what, does, what does that feel like? By asking questions from a, a non-judgmental, this is a computer, this is the soul of your, your phone is asking you a question. What does it feel like to be human, essentially? Um, you know you're not going to get any judgment. You've nev probably never thought about that question before, and so here's a moment to reflect um, and to bring into conscious awareness uh, and to vocalize um, the experience of what it's like to be human. It's designed to reveal for users the interplay between their social experience, their emotional experience, and the way that the material object um, and, and the electronic environment engenders their experience. Finally, um, on the extend and choose plane here, um, metapragmatics is, uh, pragmatics is generally much more oriented towards uh, a goal. Mindfulness, I mentioned, is kind of this disposition. Um, 
that, uh, that is non-judgmental. But on the right there, compassion, it is sort of an orientation towards a disposition, which I highlighted previously. And um, on the extend side there for metapragmatics, enactment of a strategic interaction, again, this is a sort of goal-oriented question of, like, in this current moment, what do I want to achieve and how do I, how do I move towards it? How do I implement this strategy? On the right side, community, it's also a sort of, it's not a specific goal so much as it is a, um, a general uh, movement towards uh, an integrative, community-oriented experience. Um, so let's look at some screenshots from this section. Here we see um, Robox. This is the birth of Robox. And it's, it's kind of incubating, and then it has a little movement in the second slide. And, and there, finally, uh, we see it crack and begin to, begin to come to life. And we're hoping that this interaction with this digital interlocutor from, from the other side, this intercultural experience, will help engender the birth of a metacognitive awakening, where here this kind of more articulate, inspired avatar comes to life and participates with the user, and the user has a choice to consciously and conscientiously interact with this alien digital intelligence that is so responsible for their you know, for part of their experience. Um, so how does, to answer this, this last question, uh, the fifth question of six, how does Analog U connect to meta pragmatics? You're guided by an avatar who functions as a cultural ambassador and informant, um, period, new line, typo. The user's experience is framed as a cross-cultural encounter. Pragmatics and strategy-based digital, um, it's also pragmatics and strategy-based digital mindfulness instruction. And then finally, we're, we're hoping that this, this is pointing us towards um, meta-pragmatic development through explicit mindfulness training. It's pretty, um, it's kind of, we're, we're pretty far out in, uh, in verifying this. So that's certainly the next step, empirical validation that the, um, the theoretically informed decisions that we made along the way are actually uh, going to get at the heart of what we're, um, what we're aiming for. We're going to do this in three ways. Um, first, by looking at language and behavior and seeing if there's any pragmatic or metapragmatic development. Next, um, by looking at the back-end user data to see kind of what the dynamics of interaction are. And then finally, to look at the physiological uh, side of users who engage with the app and see if there's any, um, any brain change that happens as a result of, of the interaction. So, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.